I'm Eric Hollenbeck, Director of Percussion Studies at Colorado State University. I'm here today talking about the Tiffany Etude for the Allstate Band and Orchestra 2015-2016 auditions. Um, this is basically the, the percussion end of it. And um, today, obviously, I'm going to give you Tiffany Etude and the Mal Etude, and then suggesting that you go to Anthony Cerrone's website to see the snare drum explanation and performance. So anyways, to talk about uh, page 38 Etude, on page 38 of the Garwood Whaley Musical Studies for the Intermediate Timpanist. Um, we're looking at four drums, which in the past typically has been three, so there's a little bit more. Uh, means we have to tune, obviously, one more interval. Primarily, we're looking at tuning, basically, a G7 chord, and that's just G, B, D, and F, um, a dominant seventh chord. So we're looking at tuning a major third from G to B, and then B to D is a minor third, D to F is a minor third. So that's probably your first challenge and biggest challenge that you're gonna have with this, this particular etude. So what I recommend is that use a tuning fork, not a pitch pipe, and don't get your pitch from the keyboard since keyboards typically are tuned to A442. So to be on spot and encourage yourself to use intervals, I recommend an A440 tuning fork. So you get your pitch, hey, and I would recommend singing a little bit to yourself softly. And then uh, in order to get a G down from an A, you just think I make A, me, and I think me, re, and I actually go down to do, which is F, and then back up. So I got me, re, do, re. And by singing A and F up and below the pitch that I'm looking for, it references the pitch and gives me a little more accuracy on it. So me, re, do, re. Next step I'm gonna do is gonna tune up, since we tend to hear melodies up rather than hearing them down. Um, basically, I've got my G in my head, re, G, and I'm gonna make sure the pedal's below that. And basically, most of these pitches lie within the middle of the range, so the pedal's gonna be not at the top, not at the bottom, somewhere in the middle, which kinda helps your ear know where to go. So, you got re or G, you're gonna bend down so your ear's closer to the head, and you wanna kinda tap gently and softly with the mallet, so you get the G, and then hit it again to check. Okay, and that's basically the procedure I would use. For the next one, the B, I would recommend tuning and singing, do me, so me. Again, you're singing on top and below the pitch you want. So me, me, or B. Okay, and then so for your, your fifth or D. Okay, and then from there, from D up to F, you need to find a minor third. Now, a minor third up, I think, Brahms' lullaby, which is and so forth, which is a little above my range at this point, but uh, that gives you an idea. So, basically, finding the F above D, you can think Brahms' lullaby is one way to think of it. So here's your D. So, F. Okay, and that's basically the procedure I would use. So it's really important that you get those pitches in your head before you go to tune. And then when you tune, I wouldn't sing, okay, and make sure you can audiate or internalize the pitch in your head really well. If you hear the pitch really well in your head, it's really easy to tune the timpani. And then from there, you can check your pitches. G and D, which is a fifth, if you hit them together, okay, that's something that we hear a lot in music is the fifths played in parallel. And therefore, it's really easy to check that if you hit that. And again, I'm doing everything softly for an audition. And then B up to F is a tritone, augmented fourth, diminished fifth. And you can think, Maria, the Simpsons, basically to kind of find that. So again, I would tune up each pitch and then go back and kind of check. Okay, and then from there, you can also do, to kind of hear those pitches. Okay, so tuning obviously is the biggest challenge when we get the timpani and something that we do that's unique to these instruments that we don't do in other percussion instruments. So you want to spend a lot of time getting those intervals in your head and practice tuning them and doing it in a way that is unobtrusive and not obnoxious and accurate. So anyways, I would, I would definitely work on that. Um, the next step is kind of understanding basically what tempo you want to take. And I like in the middle between 60 and 72, 66, I really like a lot. I think it sits well. And what I do is I dampen one drum at least on every eighth note rest. 
Um, so occasionally you can do two drums if you can get in there if you have a little longer rest. Um, but generally, like on the first line, you'll see in the performance video that I'm usually catching the last pitch that I played, I dampen, basically. And occasionally, if I can do two, that's great, too. So, um, like at the very beginning, when I do basically the third beat, which is, I'm just dampening the top drum and not the, the bottom drum to allow me to play the next play. So, generally, if you get rid of something in there, it gives the indication of adhering to the rest, and you want to do that consistently throughout the piece. A couple places um, that get a little more challenging as far as keeping time is the actual first line. I would say the fifth line down as well when it starts to break up in eighth note rest, you wanna make sure you keep your momentum and keep the time and that the rest don't end up bogging the time down a little bit. Um, because you have this top drum, the 23 inch drum in use, you have to be really careful that you're managing and dealing with it carefully and that you don't overplay it. Um, that mid-range to lower range of this drum really kind of barks and gets really sour easily, so you want to play it with care, generally. Versus the bottom drums, you need to kind of create a little stronger sound out of. So we get a balance between the low pitches, which tend to project slower and less than the upper pitches. So easy here and a little stronger down here, generally, to balance the sound in the way it comes out. Um, you have two crescendos actually written as an abbreviation of the word crescendo, C-R-E-S-C -E period, that you have to keep in mind. And the first one that's on the page, I think is the sixth or seventh line down, and that's a four measure crescendo to the fortissimo from piano. So you need to kind of keep that in your mind and keep that crescendo going. And the last one is the last two lines, which is about three measures long, and keep that one going uh, again from piano to forte at this point. And then the last three notes, you can kind of bark out just a little bit more. Um, so primarily looking for good rhythm, a consistent way of dampening, okay? And you can check out the performance video and how I approach that. Okay. And make sure your dynamics are consistent throughout the piece. In other words, piano equals piano. In other words, your piano on the second line equals your piano on the fifth line. Your fortes equal each other and so forth. As far as rolls go, the roll speed on the top drum that you have um, is going to be a little faster than the roll speed on the bottom drum in general. Um, but in general, as far as timpening goes, I tend to encourage a French or thumbs up grip and that basically creates a little more ringing, more vibraphone sound rather than a tom-tom sound. And primarily you want to make sure you're lifting out of the drums to create articulation and that length in the sound and that warmth in the sound. There's a couple places like fourth line up from the bottom, second measure where you have marcato accents and you want to really kind of play a sharp quick stroke with a lot of fulcrum pressure to really create that point to the sound. Whereas other places you can have a pretty relaxed lifting sound and you primarily want to do that from your wrist. Um, I sit when I play. You don't have to necessarily sit. You can also stand, which this one in some cases may be easier. I think it's just a matter of where I like to be, where my arms are comfortable to these timpani in particular. But um, anyways, I think the tuning is the most challenging. That thing is working out some of the dampening issues. And obviously in, the, in an etude like this, you want to keep really solid time on. So anyways, thank you very much. Best of luck.